So welcome to Technomad Life. My name is Jeff and so by the time you watch this video I'm going to be on a big trip. And because I like using servers, computers, and whatnot, I decided to make myself a little travel server to bring with me. And I got a little tiny router to go along with it. So let's see what I found and how much everything weighs and how I set this all up. Okay, so first we're starting with the server. And so it's this little tiny mini PC that I got a while ago. I haven't really done too much with it. Uh, but this one is really interesting because it comes apart. And so if we just take the top part here, It weighs six tenths of a pound or 279 grams with the bottom part. Totals only 417, 18 grams or 0.92 pounds, so almost a pound there. So that doesn't have, so that doesn't have a hard drive in it. Oh, actually it does have a hard drive in it. Let's see. It has this one terabyte SSD, uh, but we could also use, I have this two terabyte hard drive. Let's see the difference between these two. The SSD is 0 0.072 or 34 grams, where the regular hard drive 122 grams or 0.266 pounds. Quite a difference there. So, uh, so for the sake of weights, we'll just leave this one terabyte SSD in here. Now, I could just leave Windows on here, but I'm going to install OpenMediaVault. So then it has a regular server software. Uh, so I don't need to have a screen or anything when I actually turn it on. We can just uh, access it through our network. And what I found to carry this all in, so we have the computer and this is the power supply for it actually. It's a little tiny, it's 12 volt, 2.5 amps at uh, 30 watts there. But it all fits into this little case that I found. And so this case was actually for, I got it for my daughter, she had an action camera. Oops. And so all together, to bring a server with is one pound 0.75 or 793 grams. So in a second, we'll put Open Media Vault on that. In the meantime, I will show you our travel router that I got. And so this is the GL iNet AC1200, which was pretty cheap. And so there's the top, there is the back, bottom, sides, and it has these little tiny arms that come up. And this is a total of 146 grams or 0.322 pounds, so pretty light. Now why I got this is because every time we go someplace, the first thing I have to do is get everybody's cell phones, everybody iPad on the network. With this, I can set a network ID on this and then just plug it into whatever network we're in. And then everybody will be set up and so there'll be less work for me overall. 
Uh, why I picked this one in particular, first of all, it's small, but it was actually supposed to come with a case, and, but mine didn't come with a case. So we'll have to figure out something for that. It also has a little power supply, which is about as big as the other one, I think. This is, so this is, looks like five volt, uh, three amps, 15 watts. But size wise, let's see the comparison here. Well, I guess it is quite a bit smaller actually, if you can see that. Width wise and uh, length wise there. Now, unfortunately, this case right here is not big enough to hold both these things. So we're either really gonna have to find a case for this or maybe stick the two of these in there, power supplies and something else, which is probably what I'll do. So next, let's install Open Media Vault on the server, and then we'll take a look, quick look at the router configuration menu. Okay, so to install Open Media Vault, I need a USB drive. We need to go to openmediavault.org and download that. And then we're going to use a program called Etcher, and that, one, that will burn the USB drive for us. And so I'm going to skip the installation, but I'll come back in a few minutes and show you it all installed. Okay, here you can see that we have Open Media Vault set up and we have our CPU utilization and it's down at zero right now. File system set up, memory is there, network interfaces, smart drive set up. And we just had, it just showed our services as started, but for some reason the check marks just went away. It shows we have updates available uh, it's been up for two hours, and that's about it for there. Uh, we go to storage, we can see our two disks, set up file systems on them, and yes, I clicked the wrong thing here, so I did extension 3 instead of extension 4. File systems, we have those set up. We set up a few services, Docker Compose and SMB. And that should be all we need to do to share files when we travel. So now what we'll do is we'll start our server and see how much power that uses. So about 11 watts on startup, and then over time it should settle down to about 5 when it's running. Okay, it is the next day, and so I've been deep diving into the little router here, the GLINET uh, Opal. SFT 1200 and so it's based on OpenWRT which is a open sort of software for routers but they have their their own interface and so if we take a look at it so this is their interface so I have it hooked up by a cable it can be repeater tethering a modem and they give you options to how to set those up. Uh, it has 2.4 Wi-Fi guest, 5 and 5 guest. You can do our clients. Easy upgrade, automatic, or you can just do it yourself. Uh, so I did it myself earlier. You can set up a firewall, uh, open ports, create a DMZ. Uh, use different VPNs like WireGuard. You can either do a client or a server. It has an internet kill switch, so if your uh, VPN goes down, then it actually stops the connection. VPN policies, and it even has Tor here, so you can use this as an onion router. So basically, uh, 
you can put it on the your all your traffic on the anonymous tour network just by clicking a few different things and picking a country so next we have applications we have plugins and so here uh, is where you would do that uh, the description show up after a while but they're not complete we can do file sharing so we have to turn things on put a directory and then we can apply share via dnla do remote access cloud management dynamic dns captive portal uh, set up our ad guard here and snooping more settings you can change your password or LAN IP time zone if we go all the way down to the bottom advanced so this is the open WRT uh, access and it's called Lucy so we press on that and then it takes us to this our authorization our password is the same as we first put in and it takes us to different information a little overwhelming but anyways you can get an overview firewall root system logs kernel log processes real time graph system administration software startup schedule backup reboots interfaces wireless switch blah 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 so on and log out we'll just go over to software and here you can see the software has better definitions than are the ones that are in the first spot but we can switch back and forth so say we go to applications plugins and so we have WireGuard home installed and we did that through the other one but for some reason let's see the API is unavailable so I'm not sure if it seems to be working so if I go to another website it is blocking ads uh, but it is not showing me that it's the ad guard thing and maybe that's because I did it through open WRT instead of through this well, anyways it blocks ads but we can't see any of the data for it so so let's check its energy usage next so if we look at our router we can see that it's just using 3.1 watts so it looks like we have a super efficient setup with our server and our router basically 15 watt total and they fit nice and compactly this is the server case i have a router case that's coming that will fit these two things in there and the other the benefit that I just didn't see doing this was actually this is completely silent too and I don't know about you but uh, I find computers irritating sometimes so I like completely silent systems now so but anyways we'll try these out and in the future I'll make a video how this all worked but definitely a super efficient affordable way to bring a server and a router with you. So you take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.